All right, gonna try this again because the last one apparently had no sound. Yay. All right, pessaries, are they a crutch? Is it what it used to be back in the day where it would take like six, eight months to get a referral to a provider and actually get fitted over a couple appointments for pessary? Or now that there's more and more pelvic floor physical therapists that are fitting pessaries and are being educated in that, can we start to use them in a different way where it's not, oh, you know, you're, you're, you you fail a physical therapy, I guess you've got to, you know, do a pessary or um, you can't get better if you use a, a pessary. I think we need to think about how we look at that. Um, I've had more patients recently where we've been uh, either fitting them sooner within the first, I would say three to four months postpartum, or they've been fit by a provider uh, earlier. And instead of thinking about a pessary for life, what we're actually doing is thinking about how we can increase um, physiological capacity and then start to wean people off the pessaries for chosen activities. So for example, um, I have one patient I'm working with right now. She was fit really early by a provider. Um, we started her running with a pessary. Um, she has a, a lifting job for work. So she was lifting with a pessary and her first goal was, I don't want to wear this to work. And so we're gradually starting to taper off that. Um, and as we're looking at this, like she's been doing strengthening, she's been doing impact training, all sorts of things. And the question is, what is occurring physiologically um, to allow us to do that? And it's kind of like two things. It's a mindset shift that pessaries are temporary. And it's also a mindset shift that we have to understand what the pessary is actually doing. And, and let's just be clear, we don't, this is all guessing. Um, I do think there's some kind of dampening of information from the nervous system because let's just be honest, pessaries um, can give people a big break um, from feeling constant pressure or constant prolapse symptoms or things like that. So if you're taking that sensation away, then your nervous system gets a chance to kind of chill the hell out, right? At the same time, you're also potentially, you know, giving tissue support. So if they're like overstretched or something, like maybe they're kind of finding their new resting place. I don't know. And again, I'm being super vague on this because we just don't know. Um, but in the process of that, we're also getting stronger, teaching the body to have more capacity for strength, impact management, those sorts of things. Um, and then start to wean off. We have a calm ner nervous system. We have a lot more physiological support than we did have before. Um, we have better ability to manage um, and have strategies to manage pressure. Um, should this be the conversation that we're having? So instead of thinking of a pessary as the be all end all, okay, this is what you get for the rest of your days. Do we think of it as an earlier intervention to give a break and then gradually start to taper off or you only use it for certain things? Um, and I think because more physical therapists are being trained in this, um, especially within the last year in the United States, I mean, they've been doing it in Canada and, and Australia for a, a, a much longer. Um, because the barriers for entry and access are much lower, um, are we going to be seeing a change in how we use these devices? i would be really, really curious um, I know I've been experimenting since I was trained and fitting, I guess probably it was like last December, I got started again in January. It's like, if we use these devices earlier, are, what are we doing to the nervous system? What are we doing to the tissues? Like what, what's happening so that, you know, four five, six months down the line, we can start to taper off when before people couldn't do these activities, um, at all without support and now we're tapering them off these devices and they're doing fine. So I'm really excited to see where it's going. Um, again, I think the biggest issue has been um, the barriers to entry are coming down. Um, a lot more people are being trained. A lot more people are going to be able to offer this as an option for their patients. So what are we learning from it? I just hope that people see it as an opportunity or providers, PTs see it as an opportunity to start to experiment and think about it a little bit more um, instead of, okay, you failed, let's do this. Um, and again, same thing with over-the-counter stuff. I, I've been trying that all the time where um, even 
trying that all the time. We're um, even just playing with menstrual. I don't know if I want to go through all this and I don't know if I want to put it in, take it out and all that kind of stuff. But what's so interesting is if you're of the age and stage that you've used menstrual cups or discs your whole life, you're used to putting things in and taking them out. Um, you're going to have a good sense of whether that provides support or not. Um, those of us that are vintage is slightly before that, um, we might have a little bit more trouble because we're just not, you know, that wasn't what we were brought up on, but we may use them now. Again, like it, it, I think the barriers are so much lower than they used to be. Um, and so I'm really excited and I hope people start to challenge themselves on how we can use these devices. Um, what's the context, um, play with patients and figure out and, and in a very collaborative way to figure out um, what's the best use case scenario for each person. Um, so if you have been fitted for a pessary and you've been using it for a while or it's new for you, definitely help my DMs. Let me know kind of how that process, how you navigated that process and got there. And for those of you that are just, um, you're new to this, uh, I know a big cohort went through a couple weeks ago, um, on fitting, um, like, let me know kind of what your thoughts are, how you're thinking about using this. I know a lot of people are just starting to get around to the logistics of how do I actually make this happen. But once you get past those logistics, like I feel like the sky's the limit on this. We have a lot to learn and a lot that we will learn about um, what prolapse symptoms actually truly are and what are we doing. And hopefully we'll inspire some research questions for those uh, PhD people out there that um, are going to go find that information out for us. So anyway, hop in my DMs. I would love to hear kind of uh, how you're using it um, or how you're thinking about using it. And hopefully this one had sound. <laughs>